All right, I got that changed out to the bigger, the bigger holes, portholes. Let's fire this bucket up. Texture there. Huh. Yeah, yeah, I think I'll enjoy that more from a texture standpoint. You can just see it just, I mean, muscles its way through that beam. Whole, whole uh, drumsticks, no problem. One after another. Bones and all. And remember, folks, you know, oh, it's just dogs can't eat chicken bones. Not true. Dogs should not eat cooked chicken bones. But the, uh, the uh, ground bones are certainly great for them. And you can feed your dog raw chicken bones all day long. The only exception to that is um, there's a little bone in the chicken thigh that can be like toothpick sharp that can get stuck in their mouth or something. But if you're hacking your meat up or grinding it like this that's not a problem so like I uh, earlier I put carrots through there the broccoli this thing grinds it all up like a champ again I'm doing this video because right now for anybody uh, interested this is on sale this half half a horsepower unit at Gander Mountain for uh, $245 I think it's a very good deal this stuff um, you know really nice machining on these parts that come apart uh, nice quality stuff here. Total opposite of a piece of work I bought yesterday. Uh, so let's try, let's just see how stuffing some kale in there goes. See how that looks coming out. Because I like to, like to mix it as I go. Because that makes less mixing in the bucket. Yeah. Seems to handle the kale this time, which doesn't surprise me. So anyway, um, here's the other thing, folks. You know, I can buy the beef for four four dollars a pound usually. Um, can buy the chicken for two two nineteen a pound. That's uh, you know, that's no antibiotic stuff. So you can get your uh, and then you put in the kale and broccoli and stuff. You can get your dog's uh, raw diet cost down to. I'd say easily $3 a pound, even less than that if you just want to go with the chicken, which is fine. I mix the beef in too because Sophie right now is not real crazy about the raw chicken uh, by itself. The puppies, they'll eat anything. Uh, so I mix the beef in for Sophie and, you know, it's good for them. But you could get this dog food in for under $2.50 a pound. And, and here's the other thing is that... Um, you don't have to feed your dog as much because it's very nutritious food. And remember, the raw is healthy for them. They have the the uh, systems that can, uh, you know, that has the enzymes that can that can handle raw food. I mean, that was their diet uh, prior to dogs being domesticated in, in the wild. So, uh, I've had uh, confrontational discussions with vets and. Uh, about this and I'm not buying into their bullshit this particular vet was against a raw diet and couldn't give me any concrete good reason other than people can get sick preparing the food just like you can get sick if you don't wash your hands after making hamburgers so um, what I see there so don't trust your vet on this do your own research because what I see there are veterinarians that are selling science diet and other foods at their practices and they're getting paid by these uh, by the dog food companies to do that, you know, because that's good PR for those dog food companies when they see the science diet in their vet's office. Um, so I wouldn't doubt the vets get it at a deep discount, sell it back to you and make a, a huge profit. So uh, there is nobody out there, you know, who's making their own raw food who pay for golf trips and stuff for these vets that I'm sure they're getting from the likes of science diet. So do your own research. Use your common sense, folks. I mean, this is all raw, nutritious food. Kale, broccoli, carrots, beef, and chicken, including the chicken bones, which has that calcium and marrow in it. Extremely healthy for your dog. And I'm going to tell you what, they're going to love it. You know, the whole kibble thing, the um, guy at the dog park was telling me that, because he, he's been trying to get his dog on raw diet um, 
his girlfriend was resisting a little bit. Finally, he succeeded, but told me the whole kibble thing was started like in World War II to be able to preserve this stuff for a long time. Your dog's not meant to be eating kibble. There's usually tons of filler in that, and I don't care how good a brand kibble it is. It ain't as good as this, bottom line. If you're a dog, what do you want to be eating? And, and here's the last thing I'll say about it. Yeah, it costs a little more per pound, but you don't have to feed your dog nearly as much. And guess where you're really going to save in the long run? You're going to save in lower vet bills. And the biggest motivator for me is the heartache of having a sick dog and worrying about that. And if I know that I've done everything that I think I can to give my dog the healthiest diet possible, then I'm not going to feel so bad when that, you know, if that day ever comes. But I think the probability of that day ever coming is a lot lower when you feed your dog a good raw diet. Another thing that I don't do, but that you can do to be a cost saver, uh, or feed them chicken necks, uh, like for breakfast maybe. That, that's um, also uh, very nutritious and good for them. Just feed them to them raw. Um, I don't mind just doing this for the cost, you know, and I think the dogs enjoy it more than just chicken necks, but your dog might be different. You can also feed your dog chicken feet. That's good for them. Uh, and lots of other raw stuff out there. If you can afford it, you know, get your dog rabbit meat. Um, uh, you know, find a, find a small local supplier is the best. I'm still looking for a good supply for affordable, you know, chicken and beef. Because, um, heck, there's one in Pennsylvania called uh, that my friend turned me on to called Hair Today, H-A-R-E, uh, today.com. But what kills me on that, my per pound price, I get slaughtered by the shipping. Um, but it's even good, like you can put 10, maybe go 5% liver, like chicken liver and stuff like that in there. I don't have any organs in my mixture yet, but um, once I get things rocking and rolling, you know, I'll probably throw some organ in there, some liver. Dogs love liver, and it's very good for them, rich in iron and stuff. So anyway, uh, keep your eyes peeled, because you might see me making this stuff locally before long and selling it. Um, not so much to make a profit, but you know, to, to be able to provide people with good raw dog food, because I was buying my stuff frozen, and it, the, this good, really, it's really good raw food, OC brand, was coming from all the way out in California, which is ridiculous, and I felt bad about, you know, those transportation costs and that, that sort of thing, burning the fossil fuel. So, this this little baby here, this this uh, Gander Mountain Number 8 grinder, it'll pay for itself in two, two or three batches of food, actually. Anyway, I hope this helps somebody. Um, out there and uh, get your dog on a raw diet man it's good for them they'll love it and uh, you'll feel really good about it I think I'm, I'm really big on you know knowing where your food comes from and sitting here watching the parts go into it anyway uh, have a good one bye